Intraaortic balloon pump therapy has been established as conventional treatment to augment poor left ventricular function. It is a standard component in the management of patients in cardiogenic shock, unstable angina, those being weaned from cardiopulmonary bypass, patients undergoing percutaneous coronary intervention, and high-risk patients in preparation for cardiac or other general surgical procedures. Cardiologists, internists, and cardiovascular surgeons are routinely trained in the insertion and management of the intraaortic balloon catheter. This videotape reviews the insertion and removal of datascope intraaortic balloon catheters using both the sheathless and sheathed approach. The key attributes of datascope IAB catheters are smooth transition between wrapped balloon and catheter shaft, a unique GLI or gas lumen insert allows a flexible catheter design and helps prevent kinking during insertion. The co-lumen design maximizes space for gas shuttle and pressure lumens. Longer insertable length than most IAB catheters. Sheathless insertion results in a reduction of the cross-sectional area of the indwelling catheter in the femoral artery as compared to the sheathed introduction of the same diameter catheter. Because of its improved conservation of distal leg perfusion, sheathless insertion is the approach of choice particularly in patients with small vasculature or peripheral vascular disease. In those instances where sheathless insertion is contraindicated, an introducer sheath with an integral hemostasis valve is included with the insertion kit. The intraaortic balloon operates on two simple principles. One, that increasing diastolic aortic pressure augments coronary artery blood flow. And two, that decreasing end diastolic aortic pressure immediately prior to systole reduces the heart's afterload. These changes result in increased myocardial perfusion and oxygen delivery and decreased myocardial work and oxygen demand, reversing the pathophysiology of the ischemic or failing heart. Datascope intraaortic balloon catheters are designed to provide the maximum benefits of balloon pumping. The inner lumen allows guided insertion over a guide wire and arterial pressure monitoring. The outer lumen is used for helium transport into and out of the balloon. To prepare for sheathless insertion of the intraaortic balloon catheter, assemble the following sterile equipment. One basin of saline, local anesthetic with syringe and needle, one scalpel and blade, one 20cc syringe, lint-free sponges, one Kelly clamp or equivalent. Open the sterile insertion kit first. It contains all remaining required equipment for balloon insertion. One 18-gauge angiographic needle, one J-tip guide wire, one tapered tissue dilator, one freeway stopcock, one male lure lock plug. In the event that sheathless insertion is contraindicated or is not successful, an introducer sheath with hemostasis valve and dilator are supplied. Prep and drape the patient in the standard fashion for cannulation of the femoral artery. Administer local anesthesia to the chosen site. If angiograms are available, select the iliac system that appears less torturous or atheromatous. Insert the 18-gauge angiographic needle into the femoral artery. Use a shallow angle of entry to minimize the potential to kink the catheter. Thread the J-tip of the guide wire through the needle. Be sure to use the wire supplied, as it has been specifically designed for optimal catheter tracking. Advance the guide wire so that its tip lies at the level of the proximal thoracic aorta. Remove the needle, leaving only the guide wire in place. Apply pressure to control bleeding. Wipe the guide wire with a sterile wet sponge. Careful dilation of the femoral artery at this point prevents arterial tearing and reduces the risk of hematoma. Make a small incision in the skin at the exit of the guide wire. Now introduce the tapered tissue dilator over the guide wire into the punctured femoral artery to dilate the insertion site. Remove and discard the dilator, leaving the guide wire in place and compress the site to control bleeding. Once again, wipe the guide wire with a sterile wet sponge. For sheathless insertion, spread the subcutaneous tissue using a Kelly clamp or similar device. Attention to spreading the subcutaneous tissue and careful dilation of the vessel facilitates successful insertion. 
anticoagulant therapy, if indicated, may now be administered. Open the sterile pack containing the balloon catheter. The yellow gas lumen insert is connected to the one-way valve and is designed to enhance catheter placement. Connect the one-way valve to the male lure end of the balloon tubing. Aspirate 30 cc of air with the enclosed 60 cc syringe. This maneuver will compact the balloon membrane, allowing for easy removal from the tray and smooth insertion. Disconnect the syringe from the one-way valve, leaving the valve in place on the balloon catheter. Now, remove the balloon from its protected tray by lifting the Y-fitting and catheter from the tray. Position the balloon catheter with fluoroscopic guidance. If fluoroscopy is not available, estimate how far to advance the balloon catheter by measuring the patient from the angle of Louis to the umbilicus, and then diagonally to the femoral insertion site. Advance the sheath seal to this level to guide placement level. Dip the balloon catheter in the sterile saline prior to insertion. Remove the balloon's inner stylet by unscrewing the cap at the base of the Y fitting and pulling straight back. Discard the stylet. You are now ready to insert the balloon. Insert the straight end of the guide wire into the balloon tip and advance the balloon catheter until the guide wire exits the female lure fitting at the Y fitting of the catheter. Ensuring that the guide wire is controlled, advance the balloon catheter into the vessel. During insertion, hold the balloon catheter close to the skin line to avoid kinking the catheter or inner lumen. Avoid using excessive force while inserting the balloon. Continue to advance the balloon until it is positioned in the descending thoracic aorta, with the tip just distal to the left subclavian artery. The balloon should be placed as high above the femoral bifurcation as possible without compromising the left subclavian artery. Proper placement helps to assure maximal unloading and augmentation and minimizes the potential for balloon catheter problems. If fluoroscopy has not been used to guide balloon placement, an x-ray must be taken immediately to confirm correct balloon positioning. If you are unable to advance the balloon without the sheath, remove the balloon leaving the guide wire in the patient and proceed with sheathed insertion. Assemble the introducer set by inserting the dilator through the hemostasis valve into the sheath. The hemostasis valve houses a diaphragm that minimizes bleeding while allowing passage of the dilator and balloon catheter. Be sure to secure the dilator to the hemostasis valve. This will prevent the sheath from slipping ahead of the dilator, reducing the potential for damage to the sheath and the artery. Place the tapered end of the introducer set over the end of the guide wire. Slip the entire assembly through the skin opening with a rotary motion into the femoral artery. Leave the guide wire, dilator, and sheath in place while the balloon is prepared for insertion. Once you have prepared the balloon, remove the dilator, leaving the sheath in place. Advance the balloon catheter over the guide wire until the guide wire exits the female lure fitting at the Y fitting of the catheter. While controlling the guide wire, Advance the catheter into the sheath. Hold the balloon catheter close to the hub of the sheath to avoid kinking the catheter or inner lumen. While the prefolded balloon membrane is easily inserted through the sheath, its smooth longitudinal folds can sometimes act as a conduit for arterial blood under pressure. Thus, at this stage of sheathed insertion, bleeding from the folds at the membrane catheter junction may be observed. This phenomenon, called channeling, is not a leak. It will stop as soon as the balloon membrane is fully advanced into the sheath. Position the balloon catheter in the manner reviewed in the sheathless insertion. Once proper balloon position is confirmed, if the first single catheter marking is visible, withdraw the 6 inch sheath past it. This ensures that the balloon membrane has fully exited the sheath and will inflate properly. Advance the movable sheath seal until it engages the hemostasis valve. The stat guard sleeve allows repositioning of the balloon if necessary. In both the sheathless and the sheathed approach, once the balloon is properly positioned, remove the guide wire from the inner lumen of the balloon catheter. Aspirate and discard 3 cc of arterial blood through the inner lumen to ensure patency. Manually flush with the syringe. Attach the arterial pressure tubing to the Y fitting.
Release the vacuum from the balloon by removing the one-way valve and attached gas lumen insert. Connect the male lure fitting of the balloon to the catheter extender. Attach the male lure of the extender to the pump console and initiate pumping. Once proper position is assured and the balloon appears to be inflating and deflating correctly, secure the Y fitting and sheath seal to the skin. Datascope provides the StatLock IAB catheter securement device to secure the Y fitting and sheath seal. If this is not available, you can secure the Y fitting and sheath seal to the skin by suturing the suture pads to the patient's skin. To secure the IAB catheter using the StatLock IAB securement device, first prepare the securement site with alcohol to degrease the skin and remove any betadine. Apply the skin prep provided to the securement site. Next, apply the tincture of benzoin provided to the securement site. Slide the StatLock securement device under the suture pads on the sheath seal of the IAB catheter. Press the suture pads into the StatLock retainer. Close the doors of the retainer one side at a time. Place the StatLock securement device on the skin and peel away the paper backing to secure the securement device. Repeat the above steps for the Y-fitting securement of the IAB catheter. StatLock allows for quick and easy securement of the IAB catheter while providing patient comfort and safety. Check the puncture site to assure hemostasis and dress the puncture site. Check distal pulses by palpation or Doppler and mark. The diameter of the inner lumen of the current intraaortic balloon catheters is smaller than that of earlier generation intraaortic balloon catheters. As a result, the following recommendations for managing the inner lumen should be observed to maintain optimal signal quality. Use a standard arterial pressure monitoring setup to deliver a 3 cc per hour continuous flush through the inner lumen. Use no more than 8 feet of pressure tubing between the transducer and the female lure hub of the Y fitting. Any time the inner lumen becomes filled with blood, remove the balloon and the sheath as a unit. Immediately upon removal, while applying distal pressure, allow two or three seconds of arterial bleeding to expel any proximal clot. Next, apply pressure proximal to the puncture site and relax distal pressure to check for back bleeding. Apply manual pressure directly over the site until hemostasis is achieved. Then apply a compression dressing over the site. Assure distal peripheral flow with Doppler or physical examination. Patient activity should be limited to bed rest following balloon removal. Monitor the patient closely for signs of limb ischemia and bleeding from the balloon insertion site. We now turn to clinical guidelines for the safe and effective management of patients receiving intraaortic balloon therapy. Several conditions may cause the diastolic augmentation to appear compromised once balloon pumping has begun. If this occurs, first verify that the augmentation control has been increased to the appropriate position to achieve an optimal augmented diastolic pressure. Next, consider clinical conditions that cause a decrease in stroke volume. Any such decrease will cause a relative decrease in the augmented diastolic pressure. These include a mean arterial pressure less than 50 millimeters of mercury, a decreased systemic vascular resistance, hemodynamically compromising arrhythmias such as tachycardia, bradycardia, and frequent ventricular ectopy. In these instances, the balloon will continue to support the patient, but the underlying clinical problem requires treatment. During insertion using a sheath, diastolic augmentation is compromised if the balloon membrane has not fully cleared the sheath. To verify clearance, simply observe the markings on the balloon catheter in relationship to the sheath. The first single catheter marking should have entered the hub of the six inch sheath. Once the sheath has been appropriately positioned, Resume pumping and observe for an improvement in the augmented diastolic pressure. Sometimes the balloon membrane may not completely unfold as pumping begins. If fluoroscopy is in use, observe for uniform inflation of the balloon membrane. If you suspect the balloon has not completely unfolded, detach the balloon catheter from the extender and attach a three-way stopcock and a 60cc syringe to the male lure fitting of the balloon catheter. Aspirate to be sure no blood is returned through the catheter tubing. Inflate and deflate the balloon by hand with 60 cc's of air or helium.
Reattach the balloon catheter to the extender. Resume pumping. Observe for an improvement in diastolic augmentation. Intraaortic balloon placement will also influence the augmented diastolic pressure. The tip of the catheter should be located between the second and third intercostal space in a femorally inserted balloon. This position should be verified with fluoroscopy or a chest x-ray. Reposition if necessary. An intraaortic balloon can, under unusual clinical conditions, be inserted into a false lumen of the aorta. If you suspect that a balloon is positioned in a false lumen, inject a radio contrast medium through the inner lumen of the balloon catheter while observing under fluoroscopy. If the catheter is in the appropriate space, the contrast medium will dissipate within the next several inflations of the balloon. If the contrast medium remains at the balloon tip with initiation of pumping, suspect positioning in a false lumen and remove the balloon catheter immediately. Intraaortic balloon membranes may be penetrated during the course of balloon therapy. Calcified plaque in the aorta may abrade the balloon surface, leading to membrane penetration. Large penetrations are rare, but on suspicion of a leak, the balloon should be removed immediately. If blood is seen within the balloon catheter tubing, stop pumping and remove the balloon. The IAB catheter should not remain inactive, that is, not inflating and deflating, for more than 30 minutes because of the potential for thrombus formation. If the balloon is replaced, there is a high probability that a leak will reoccur. A small balloon penetration may be self-sealing, but may allow a small amount of blood to enter the balloon. With continued pumping, this small amount of blood may dry within the balloon. A hardened mass of dehydrated blood may cause the balloon to become entrapped in the artery upon attempts at removal. If undue resistance is met during removal of a balloon, suspect entrapment and have the balloon removed surgically. This concludes the review of the sheathless and sheathed insertion of Datascope intraaortic balloon catheters. Datascope, the pioneer and leader in intraaortic balloon pump therapy, hopes that these guidelines will be of benefit to you in the treatment of patients at cardiovascular risk. Caution, U.S. federal law restricts this device to sale by or on the order of a physician. Refer to package insert for current indications, warnings, contraindications, precautions, and instructions for use.